hello, happy new year, and welcome to the first video of the year. I'm Jay, and you're watching DS Tech Media, and we're going to be starting this year off with a look at the Focusrite Scarlet 2i2 Generation 4 studio interface that I recently got. And as usual, would you kindly hit the like button, leave a comment, tell me how much you hate this, how much you like it, whichever. And if you're a real G, hit the subscribe button because that really helps promote this and make it worthwhile. And if you're not familiar, I do videos about tech, recording, video, music, etc. and so forth. Especially stuff about Linux. And today, we've got the Focusrite Scarlet 2i2. It's the fourth generation version. First of all, it's got a brand new layout and look to it, which includes new halo meters, including on the output knob meaning you can see your balanced output going out to your monitors or speakers. One major change, the XLR mic inputs moved to the back of the unit. We now have the choice between the normal USB bus connection, but now we also have a 5 volt DC connection which can plug into your outlet. Also uses USB-C and this means that you can now use the 2i2 with your iPhone or your Android. iOS is specifically mentioned in the literature. And another important aspect that's changed is the digital to analog circuitry built into the preamps. On the third generation, they were criticized as negatively coloring the sound. On the fourth generation, they've been replaced with RedNet conversion circuits, the same exact technology found on Scarlett's high-end devices. So with the 2i2 being $200, this makes it very competitive. Additionally, they've made large improvements to dynamic range, which has increased from 111 decibels to 116 decibels for microphone and 110 to 113 decibels on the instrument line. Gain range is up from 56 decibels to 69 decibels for the mic and 56 decibels to 61 for instruments. Monitor outputs dynamic range are up from 108 to 120 decibels, and the headphone amp itself is up from 104 decibels to 115 and 116 decibels for high and low impedance, respectively. But wait, there's more. The fourth generation adds a host of new DSP or digital signal processing functionality, which includes their key selling point, Air Circuit. The Air Circuit emulates Focusrite's classic ISA 110 mic preamp. Hitting the air button provides your input with a boost in the upper frequencies to improve the brightness and clarity. Air mode will also add a little bit of analog harmonic distortion to emulate the classic microphone preamps that gives you that little shimmer of a uh, radio announcer voice. It is joined with several other new DSP functions that have been turned into new digital controls on the interface as well. First and foremost, we've got the 48 volt phantom power here, which I'm using because I'm running a Audio-Technica AT2020 XLR mic. On the second input, I have the Korg Monologue running in the select button will switch between which channel we're currently controlling and the reason for that is the rest of our buttons are now channel dependent so if I switch to channel 2 you'll see that safe is on. Safe is a limiter 
samples at 96,000 times a second that looks for sudden rises and when it sees that sudden increase it will attempt to prevent clipping so that you don't lose a otherwise perfect take and then of course we have the air channel the auto and the instrument the instrument is equivalent to the pad button on the generation 2 it raises the gain and the impedance it's specifically for direct inputting guitars due to the spicy high drive of their pickups the other awesome item here is the auto which analyzes the signal and attempts to adjust the levels accordingly so i'm gonna kick on the synthesizer here and we're gonna run the auto and you'll see the blue analyzer light come on it's analyzing and it automatically lowered the synth's input so I'm recording this after the fact because as it turns out, if you want to use all of the features of the hardware you purchased, you have to download firmware updates. Focusrite Control 2 is the software. They don't make it available for us Linux users. However, Jeffrey Bennett has developed the Also Scarlet GUI for Linux. The only issue is the support only goes up to generations 2 and 3. So I ended up booting up Windows 11 on a VM, registering my product, and downloading the Focusrite Control 2 software. If you are using Windows or Mac, you require this to use the loopback features of the Scarlet. And the loopback is where you are sending sound out from your software on the computer to mix and monitor with the recording you're doing through the interface itself. If you right click the focus right icon you'll get settings and expose the windows channels and enable the loopback. Once you've done that the loopback devices will appear in your windows sound control. Also in the focus right control preferences you'll see the option to send direct monitor mix to loopback. Oddly enough, on Linux, you don't even have to do this because the loopback ports simply appear in your jack audio connections. Too bad you can't update the firmware from Linux. But there's possibly good news in that department as well. Jeffrey Bennett develops the also Scarlet GUI. I mentioned earlier this It's FOSS article from October Focusrite extends help to Linux developer and it turns out the Focusrite team contacted Jeffrey and they are providing him with support and possibly sending him devices ahead of launch. So that's some pretty awesome news. Literally everything that you can use the device for you can do through the Focusrite Control 2 software. Control the volume. Enable instrument, 48 volt, safe mode, auto tune. The reason why I had to do this is because I needed that update in order to get the second air mode. The second air mode adds presence and drive. The green air mode only adds presence. And the second one is supposed to give you that radio announcer console sound. However, if you just plug the 2i2 in and use it, you will not have a yellow air mode. So right now I am recording into the software of the computer. And if you look at the Scarlet, the output ring is not doing anything. And that's because there's no audio going through the output into my headphones. I hit the uh, button once and you can now see it is lighting up as I'm recording. But when you have direct off, the monitor halo shows nothing at all. So it's not monitoring me live, but it is going to light up when I hit this. You'll see the halo showing the levels.
Additionally, you can link both channels in stereo by simply holding the select button. Both of the channels are acting together. You adjust the volume for either one, it adjusts both. And then we can apply the safe modes, air modes, to both channels simultaneously. Okay, so now I want to try to demonstrate the differences in air mode. So right now, there is no air mode. So now this is the air mode, and you can, you can sort of hear there's a little bit of difference there. It's worth mentioning that there's a lot of noise in this room right now. Uh, there's a laptop right in front of me that's, that's what we're recording on here, and it's very noisy. Under normal circumstances, in any other recording I've ever done, I would have a noise gate, a compressor, and an envelope filter, and I'd be running my microphone through those. All the audio that I've done in this has just been through the Scarlett 2i2 with no live chain effects or processing. All right, now we're gonna switch on the presence and drive. And once again, you can hear that it has changed the sound, just gives it a little bit more uh, headroom, I guess I would call it. And here it is without it, just with the presence, presence and drive. All right, I'm gonna kick on the air channel. can kind of detect that sparkle. I'm gonna bump it up a little bit here. All right, right now there is no air and we're about to kick the air on. Let me turn on the spectral analysis here just so we can get a good view of it. And the air is coming on right now. So now the air is on. And you should be able to tell that there's just a little bit more headroom. And yeah, I don't I don't know if you can really tell. So it's off right now. I'm gonna kick it back on. You should be able to see the color of the spectral analysis. So there's just the uh, white noise. I'm gonna let that go and then I'm gonna kick the air back off let's go ahead and do the auto and I think it, it cuts out when you do the auto and it kicks back in and we are back and this is what it's set the levels at. Let's kick the air back on now. It's a subtle change, but a lot of people prefer Focusrite specifically for that air functionality. Oh, and one other change is to the direct monitoring. If we have it uh, listed in white, it is only in playback from the computer. You hit it once, the direct light lights up, and you have the stereo and you hit it again and you have mono so that's another change to it i guess i'll grab the guitar
I also have to mention the software that comes bundled with it, such as the Ableton Live Lite three month subscription to Pro Tools Player with complete plugins package, five free masters and two month Lander Studio subscription, Antares Auto Tune Access, Soft Tubes Hyper Realistic Model of a Marshall Silver Jubilee, plus drums, key synths, powerful production tools to get you release ready results. For a $200 price range, the Focusrite 2i2 is very, very competitive as far as sound quality goes and the features you get with it. I also have the 2i4 in the other room on my other studio computer, and I've been using that for years. I love that as well. The one other recommendation I could possibly make over the 2i2 is the Motu M. 2x2 from the research i've seen the motu beats out the scarlet in a couple features it has a graphical a mixing eq on the front the dedicated midi ports in and out as well as a pair of unbalanced and balanced lines whereas the 2i2 only has the balanced outs to the monitors However, the reviews between the 2i2 and the Motu that I've seen give it to the Scarlet due to the air mode sound quality it adds. This can do MIDI uh, via USB, which is mostly what I use. You know, I, I bought the 2i4 because it had the MIDI ports. I end up never really using the actual MIDI ports. I just do the MIDI over USB anyways. But if there was another interface I was going to pay $200 for, it would be the Motu. Not that I regret buying this one at all. I like a lot of things about this versus my 2i4. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, do you have a preference over the Scarlet? Anyways, I hope this video was helpful to you in some way. New year, new gear. So I figured I'd kick everything off this year with a review of the 2i2 gen 4 and by the way i have a documentary in the works that i've been working on for a couple months now about the history of the playstation and why it was so successful uh, i think it's going to be pretty awesome and it's the reason why i didn't publish a video for the month of december keep a lookout for that but you know i've got the studio set up and I plan to do a lot of videos this year. Once again, hit the thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe, share this with somebody you know that might like it. As always, I appreciate you taking the time to watch. And for DS Tech Media, I'm Jay, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.